Welcome back to It Resolves and another historic event. Today's deck is Golgari Oblivion. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Here at It Resolves, we love to have fun, play new decks, and hopefully learn a little something along the way. Today, we are going to be jumping into yet another historic event. I think up until the release of Phyrexia All Will Be One, we'll probably stick with historic for the most part. I know we also haven't had much gameplay from me at the very least. I know John has been throwing some out there uh, over the course of the last week. I delved down the AI rabbit hole quite heavily and on top of that, being busy with work and things like that. And unfortunately, I just didn't have time to record very much. But hoping to remedy that today with, I think, a very exciting deck. Now, this deck is originally created by MTG Original Decks, so thank you very much. I will, of course, link them down below. You probably already know who they are. If you're watching gameplay, uh, you definitely should know who they are. And they, of course, have the, the signature 61 cards, which I love. Uh, so this is a Phyrexian Obliterator deck, a fight rigging deck, however you want to call it. Uh, an absolute powerhouse of a deck. Uh, I did actually try and record this video yesterday uh, and got through most of it, but then unfortunately did not catch, there was an issue with the recording and so we have to restart. But uh, the deck is pretty straightforward. The idea is to kind of get yourself into fight rigging uh, with a either a Shakedown Heavy or a Phyrexian Obliterator down. Hopefully get the uh, fight rigging hideaway trigger very quickly to hopefully get another either Shakedown Heavy or Phyrexian Obliterator, and then use things like Tail Swipe or Bushwhack to fight off the opponent's creatures and force them to sacrifice. Uh, based off of the Obliterator's actual ability here that says whenever a source deals damage to it, that source's controller has to sacrifice that many permanents. Uh, now, a couple things to note. Obviously, four black mana is a pretty hefty price, but you can see in our mana base, as well as with that Paradise Druid, we've got the, the treasure tokens from Shambling Ghast, as well as the Deadly Dispute. We've got a lot of ways to help us get to that four black mana. Uh, and we also have a couple of other little nice pieces, not only the Shambling Gas Deadly Dispute combo, which is always good, uh, also works quite well, Deadly Dispute and Tenacious Underdog. We do also have Evolve Sleeper, which this long term will actually help us draw cards. It's a nice trade up most of the time. If you uh, have that Death Touch counter on there, you can trade up for some things. I know yesterday I tried, uh, or I blocked like a 7-7 seven, seven Hydra with this as a 3-3 three, three with Death Touch, and I guess the opponent didn't realize it had Death Touch, and it just traded it. It was awesome. Uh, but lots of really cool stuff in this deck, guys. It is a very, very strong one. I'm hoping uh, that we can get another decent run. We did have a fairly good run yesterday, again, that was partially recorded, uh, and so I'm hoping to get another good run today and have some fun with this one. So without further ado, guys, we are going to jump right in. Hopefully you guys have a blast and stick around for the full video. Let's do it, guys. Let's get into game one. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one, uh, and this is a pretty reasonable keep. It's not a very powerhouse keep by any means, but we do have the Evolved Sleeper, uh, which we can get down turn one. We've got a Paradise Druid, which is always nice. Uh, just with that Hexproof, it makes it a little bit tricky for the opponent to really do too much. Uh, and so that will help ramp us into, obviously, the fight rigging and then anything else that we see. Not that we really need to ramp. Um, it is kind of nice that this deck tops out at four mana. Uh, because it just makes it really easy to make sure that you hit everything that you want to hit, and it's not really a problem. <laughs> so, uh, that's not a huge issue. However, it is nice to be able to fix your colors. That is fairly important in a deck like this. So, uh, we'll see what the opponent's up to. I'm assuming goblins. Yeah, there we go. Uh, not a huge surprise there. <laughs> um, alright, so we can actually do a little bit of a, not tricksy play by any means, but what we can do... Mm, do we want to though? Or would it be better to just play another Evolve Sleeper? I'm gonna go this route. Um, I'm not gonna attack. I think what I'd rather do is wait. As good as the Battle Cry Goblin is, I think there's more powerful goblins like the War Chief here uh, that I'd much rather be able to take out. So we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's do this. Excellent. Um, I will go ahead and get that War Chief out of there. This is going to cheapen up all of their goblins, and so for me, that's just not something I really want to have to worry about. And again, I'm not going to attack. We will power them out if we get enough uh, time, uh, and so we really just have to make sure we're, we're being smart about our plays here. So, uh, no land this time, which is okay. 
Uh, we can just go Shambling Ghast and pass, which is not a terrible idea. Um, in fact, yeah, let's let's do this and then leave up that Deadly Dispute. Uh, I would love to get the fight rigging down as well, but we're really not anywhere close uh, to the 7 power. Uh, and so for me, it doesn't feel like that's as pressing an issue as maybe just drawing further into the deck and hopefully hitting like a land and something a little better. Uh, we can use the Deadly Dispute to grab ourselves a couple extra treasure tokens if we would like. There's some, some solid options here. Uh, very nice. Okay. Uh, this is honestly kind of fine. Cool. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and do this. Uh, we will just select the treasure token, I think, here. Bushwhack. Very good. I will take that. Uh, all right, cool. Um, so we've got some, some solid options here. Uh, I think what we are going to do... Let's go ahead and bushwhack. I'm going to get that hobgoblin out of there. Um... They do deal a damage here or here, but we can actually level up in response, so that's not really a problem. So let's just do this. There's the Obliterator. Excellent. Um, and I think I'm just going to Paradise Druid. Um, I'm going to take the opportunity here to just get as much down as we can, knowing that the Phyrexian Obliterator is most likely coming down next turn. Uh, and they really don't have a great answer. Like, they're not going to be able to sweep or do anything like that. So the Paradise Druid at the very worst is just a nice blocker. We also got to waste their trigger, which was pretty great. Um, cool. Let's throw you down. I think we just throw the Overgrown Tomb down. Uh, and probably attack in. Uh, and if they want to double up and block, that's totally fine. Uh, but we do need to start dealing some damage here. Um, and it, I mean, the Hobgoblin is a scary one for sure, but we'll see what they can do. I think this is a, an appropriate attack. It's a little tricky. You never really know, uh, to be honest. Um, but they don't have mana. They've got nothing to surprise us with at this point, which is helpful. Awesome. So, I mean, basically just a kill. They can they can obviously, you know, deal the damage here if they'd like uh, and take it out, which is fine. Sure. So we did trade, but uh, I think that's actually okay. I'm not overly concerned about that. At this point, they are much more scary in terms of just being able to throw out a ton of goblins and win on the spot. Uh, granted, they've only got four mana, but... You never really know, uh, and so that's kind of where we're at. Okay. Um, smart of them to get the treasure tokens down, especially with a Phyrexian Obliterator on the field. Uh, the reason being, they can actually sack the treasure token. It is a permanent, so that actually saves them from having to sacrifice, you know, a more permanent mana source, like a land, or just, you know, a reasonable creature or something along those lines. Now, if we get a fight spell, uh, the beauty is we can just fight off uh, the Peshalic Mons, however you say that, uh, and basically force the issue on them. Um, I'm curious to see... Um, sure. Okay. Uh, so that was going to kill it regardless. Uh, it was going to deal two damage. We could have leveled it up, but it really would not have mattered. Uh, and so I'm not going to stress about it. Uh, and we'll see what the opponent's going to gonna do. I think that's probably it. Uh, I don't think they want to attack, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, they do not. Solid. All right, let's go ahead and fight rigging. Let's see what we get. Um, this could be a really killer turn, so we're gonna go here. Uh, let's throw out you, and let's throw out another fight rigging. So now we are going to, <laughs> we're basically gonna get to trigger both of these, uh, for very little. Alright, so let's go here, and here. Let's fight off, uh, you. Um, that just gets the, the little ping ability off the table as well uh, and now they have to sacrifice three permanents so <laughs> seems pretty good double fight rigging for the win man that's so solid they also can't target the paradise druid here so i think their best bet is to either hit the obliterator or just ping us for one i honestly think it's just ping us for one but uh because this also makes them sacrifice another permanent <laughs> 
Man, Obliterator is so mean. So mean. All right, so now they have to sacrifice three things. <laughs> nice, solid. All right, I'm just gonna attack in, not gonna overthink it too much here. Uh, we could have saved, I guess, the Paradise Druid there, but they're down to three lands now. They've got nothing on board. Uh, and this is where Obliterator is just magnificent. Uh, we did not play the other Obliterator. I wonder why. I mean, not that it matters too much, but... <laughs> uh, I mean, we do it. Right? <laughs> Alright, so that's dead. They now have to sacrifice two lands. <laughs> this is a phenomenal showcase of what this deck can do. <laughs> This is amazing. Uh, so they really don't have a good option to hit. I mean, I think it's just us. Um, we can play the Evolve Sleeper and actually start drawing cards off of that as well pretty quickly here. So um, that should give us, I mean, not that we, I think we were, we're in a good position regardless, but uh, we've got another Obliterator coming down this turn as well. Like, yeah, there we go, guys. That is a solid, solid win against Goblins, no less. Uh, that felt really, really solid, guys. Let's jump into game two. Let's see if we can keep it up. All right, guys, and here we are for our second game. Uh, this actually is not a very good hand. Um, I will go ahead and mulligan that. Um, I just, it didn't feel like there was really much to go off of there. I'm gonna throw a tail swipe back here. Um, and I think the plan, yeah, I think we just go here, uh, throw a Shambling Ghast out there, hope for the best. Um, I don't think we need to overthink this too much. One thing to think about too, again, we are trying to get to four blacks, so there is a world where we... Okay, well, that sort of helps. Um, Alright, let's throw you out. Yeah, so let's actually get this off of the field here. Um, and I will auto-pay the one. I don't really want them to have an Esper Sentinel. That's one way that they just outdraw us and completely annihilate. So I feel like it's worth it to get the Sentinel off the field as quickly as we can just to avoid that. Um, fully believe they are probably just gonna be able to wreck us uh, pretty reasonably here. But let's go ahead and attack in. We'll throw out a Paradise Druid. Unfortunately, nothing major coming down right now. We've just got a bunch of lands. Uh, this is a 23 land deck and a 61 card deck, so just something to think about there. Uh, that's not bad, though. All right, cool. Uh, I'm just going to attack him for three, and I'm going to throw a Shakedown Heavy at him and see what happens. I fully believe, well, they're not going to have a Sweeper, I guess, because they've, they've got a Luris deck, so we actually don't have to worry as much about the Sweeper side of things. Instead, we can kind of just go for it um, and and overcommit maybe slightly to see what they do. Kind of interesting. I'm curious what this deck actually is uh, because all we've really seen is a Luris and an Esper Sentinel, which they can play, uh, which seems pretty reasonable, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's a solid card for sure. Um, we are... Uh, yeah, so... I mean, I think the play is to fight off the Luris. Um, I'll auto-pay there. We probably didn't actually have to do that. I'll be honest. Maybe that wasn't uh, needed. But this does have Menace, so now we can actually just free attack. And they'll probably give us a card. Yeah. Unfortunately, a land. <laughs> Come on. Uh, but we shut down the Luris, which seems important. Uh, they went for the Luris very quickly, uh, and so my assumption is that they're kind of relying on the recursive factor there. Um, but it looks like here they've got the Curious Obsession. That's pretty solid. Um, so, and they've got a Cartouche. Okay. Do you have other stuff? So this is just Voltron Esper Sentinel at this point. Um, I think they they were probably hoping for like a core spirit dancer or something. Wow, that's so good. All right, swag. Uh, I really hope we get. <laughs> this is where Phyrexian Obliterator and like a fight spell would be incredible. Uh, because really, even if the uh, Phyrexian Obliterator dies, it would still take so much damage that we would just gain so much out of it. Wow, very solid. Uh, okay, I mean, not much we can do about that. They just dealt nine to us, which feels terrible. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. Another Paradise Druid. Okay, not great. 
Um, let's attack in. We're obviously not going to be blocking here. Ugh. Man, that sucks. All right, so chances are we are probably just going to straight lose then. Um, no, no, no. Let's not do that. Let's go here. So, I, I mean, they really only have to play one or two more things. Really just one. And I think they'll be able to attack and, and win here. So, unfortunately, there's just not much we can do about it. We don't have a flyer. It's all good. Uh, and truthfully, guys, it wouldn't have mattered what we fought off at that point. Um, if anything, I think we would have been closer to death with the Luris being on the field instead of the Esper Sentinel. Uh, and so the fact that it was an Esper Sentinel doesn't really matter at this point. They gave it flying. Uh, and so if anything, this could have been a much stronger creature with lifelink uh, attacking in. And so I actually think we made the right call by killing the Luris. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense that that's, you know, the way the deck is built now. So I'm I'm cool with that. I think we made the best call that we could. Uh, but I do think they're probably just going to beat us here. Uh, which is fine. Happens, you know. Can't be too upset. You're not going to win them all. Uh, let's see. They are taking a minute to, uh, to decide what to do here. Timeout use? Why? Just attack, man. Play one more enchantment and attack. Problem solving. Guys, a uh, couple things I wanted to mention really quick. Uh, so while we're waiting, <laughs> uh, first and foremost, we did have our podcast return, uh, which I am so stoked about. John and I have been talking about this for a long time, uh, and we finally were able to get episode one out as of earlier this week. Uh, we do have an episode, uh, well, a schedule, truthfully, an eight episode schedule planned. What? why what happened <laughs> i don't i don't understand that um so we do have a full schedule planned that was weird i think they disconnected they must have um which is exciting uh we've got a lot of really cool ideas some challenges some just overview things for all will be one we've got a lot of cool stuff planned so i encourage you guys uh while we don't necessarily anticipate releasing it on the same day every week sometimes we're gonna shoot for that but if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out we're gonna do the best we can uh we're both busy uh and so it is gonna hopefully be a weekly thing but it is gonna be something where you know it might flex on the actual day it's it's released but it was a blast uh it was an absolute blast to get back into it john and i always have a great time talking magic and talking channel stuff on the last episode so please go back listen to that uh it does give you some insight as to what we are thinking for the early part of 2023 uh including our 10,000 subscriber giveaway what is ha they must have disconnected um including our 10,000 subscriber giveaway so if you are not subscribed to this channel please make sure you subscribe to the channel because uh once we hit that 10,000 subscriber goal we are going to be picking three of our subscribers for uh different packages of winners so uh some of those things will be including you know whatever the latest standard set will be so if we get it by all is one uh, or all will be one which probably won't happen but if we do We'll give away a standard box of that. We also have a, uh, John's put up a secret layer that he has, the one of the 30th anniversary uh, secret layers with, I believe it's Sharknado in there, uh, which is so sick, um, as well as some altars, all kinds of fun stuff that we will be sending out to you guys. Uh, and so please do, uh, we'll get more details on that as we get closer, but uh, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel because that's the only way you can enter. It's really important that you do that. Um, all right. I don't know what happened, but we won. I assume they just disconnected because there was no way we should have won that. But hey, a win's a win, man. We got 2-0. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, let's jump into game three. Let's see if we can keep it going. That's awesome. All right, guys, and here we are for game number three. Uh, actually, okay, hear me out. I actually think this is a keep, only because we have Shambling Gast and Deadly Dispute. That makes it such a better hand than it otherwise should be. Uh, generally speaking, I would say throw this back 100%, but I'm going to try it. Don't anticipate winning, but we are going to try it. Um, man, 2-0. and oh, After that last game, there was no reason we should have won. All right, uh, opponent did mulligan, uh, which is helpful to know. They do reveal... Okay, Soul Scar Mage, sure. Uh, let's go ahead. We are going to have to take two, which against this kind of deck is really not what you want to do, but it is what it is. Uh, we'll see what we got. All right, 
it is going to be the Prowess Magecraft deck. Uh, no surprise there. Okay, they are going to spike Field Hazard. That's fine-ish. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a treasure token. That actually sets us up quite nicely, so uh, that's fine. All right, sick. Uh, do we just take out the Soul Scar Mage? Probably, right? Um, as much as I don't necessarily want to do this, I think this is probably just the right call. Just to get that out of there. Um, and I think we just throw out an Evolved Sleeper at this point. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and grab ourselves a treasure token. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, we can Deadly Dispute the treasure token, so we can actually sacrifice that to the Deadly Dispute if we would like. Um, but, sure. We just need to keep stuff on their side at, to a minimum, if we can. Uh, and so fighting that uh, Soul Scar Mage off seems relatively important. Uh, whether it actually was it or not, I'm not sure. Um, Alright. I'm gonna throw you out there. Uh, I think we can take a hit. Um, but then we're obviously in pretty dangerous territory. Because naturally, I mean, they, they're a burn deck. They've got a lot of, you know, instant speed scary stuff. That's definitely one of those scary things, so we'll see what they can do. Oh, they didn't attack. Okay, so I'm assuming they just don't have anything in their hand that's of use, uh, which to me is great. All right, uh, this is actually kind of great for us, so let's do this. I will just fight off the Arcanist. Uh, so the reason I want to fight the Arcanist and not the, the Mage here is pretty simple, actually. That allows them to replay stuff from their graveyard, and it seems to me that if they would have had something, or at least any one mana thing, they probably would have played it last turn. Um, and so it seems to me we're shutting down more by getting rid of the Arcanist and not the, uh, the, the Sage here. Now, again, we do take a little extra damage here, which sucks. Uh, but I, get, I, I think shutting down the recursive factor of this deck when they've only got one card in hand is a pretty reasonable out. Um, Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna attack. I'm going to Deadly Dispute, and basically we're hoping for the best at this point. That is not the best. Um, I mean, we can just fight rigging, but it's not all that helpful. I guess we just go for it. There's no reason really not to, because I mean, at this point, we're just kind of hoping we get something good. Definitely going to throw the Shakedown Heavy under it. Um, and, yeah. Don't love this. Uh, hopefully, they just don't have a spell. If they all have a spell, nothing happens this turn, right? Like, that's kind of the benefit. And it looks like that might be the case. Nope, I lied. They had a Bone Crusher. All right. Swag. They honestly might have... There was a world where they waited and just didn't play that yet. But I think that's fine. All right. Ooh, scary, scary. Okay. Um, all right, let's move. Throw a counter on it. Let's do this. We're going to fight you off. That does kill this. Or no, excuse me, it does not kill it. All right, so now we just have to hope they didn't hit a spell. If they had a spell, we lose. There's nothing we can do about it, though. Yep, they got us. Uh, pretty fun deck to play against, though. There was a world where, like, if we hit just a really good, like, Phyrexian Obliterator play, we could have actually solved that problem. Just didn't get there. Uh, so, that's okay. I believe that's our first loss. Let's, let's double check the score. I think we're two and one. Yeah! All right, sick. Let's jump into game four. All right, guys, and here we are for game number four. This is actually a very solid keep, uh, so we will definitely go for it. Any hand where you've got Shakedown Heavy plus Fight Rigging is, like, I mean, definitely a keep. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that Shambling Ghast out there. Pretty strong start. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be the big, like, kill us instantly deck, which is terrifying, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, eh. Alright, look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shock ourselves. <laughs> Seems silly, but I am going to do this pre-attack, so that way we can Deadly Dispute. Uh, and I think we'll probably just immediately Deadly Dispute. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. 
Uh, let's draw a couple cards. Let's see what we get. Create that treasure token. Game kind of froze for a second. That was a little scary. All right. <laughs> now we've got tons of mana. All right, so let's throw you out there. Let's not waste any mana if we don't have to. Um, I am going to go ahead and fight off the goblin token. We don't want them getting extra mana. Uh, so this seems pretty reasonable to me. If they have a way they can just bounce this or kill it, that's fine. It doesn't really matter because um, it's going to die regardless. All right. And then I am just going to pass. Again, we want to leave up some amount of mana here. Not for an instant speed spell, but just a pre-plan for the next couple turns. Yeah, the Sarah's Emissary. That's the scary one. Um, all right. We'll see what we can do. We definitely don't want them to get that. I feel like a Bazooka Bog or something like that in this deck would be such solid tech. Uh, I mean, I know it seems a little silly or a little overkill, but it just seems so good. All right, so hopefully they can't kill the Shakedown Heavy. Ah, you got me. All right. Um, I think with that in mind, let's just attack first. Uh, chances are they're just going to give us a card draw. Yeah, they're just going to take it. Interesting. Um, all right, let's Shambling Gas. Okay, uh, well, we've got our four black. They've taken quite a bit of damage, but, uh, I mean, they could just surprise kill us at any time, right? That, uh, that Sarah's Emissary is really a huge lockout for us. And there's the, <laughs> there's the creativity. Um, I think we can just do this and remove this as an issue. I don't know what they get off of the artifacts. Is it the... All right. So they chose creature. <laughs> um, okay, just because I don't know how this works, we're going to try it. <laughs> Alright, cool. <laughs> Alright, uh, that's a good game. Um, there's really nothing we can do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just concede. They, I mean, we literally are relying on creatures, and our creatures basically just do nothing. So, unfortunately, that's just a hard pass for us. That puts us at 2-2, two and two, guys. So that does mean that this next game is going to be a big one. This either determines if we keep going or if we are out. So, let's jump into it. Alright, guys, and here we are for our next game. Uh, generally speaking, I don't love this hand, actually, but I'm gonna try it. If we're against a fast deck, we are in some trouble, but we'll do what we can. Colney Garden. Interesting. Alright, so let's just throw this down tapped. No reason to, to take extra damage. Looks like a Luris deck, so this is gonna be a fast one. Uh, which is not what you want. Oh, it's the oven. Lovely. Oh, good, and they already have the combo. <laughs> All right, so chances are we're going to lose, uh, <laughs> which is fine. I mean, there's nothing we can shut this down with, uh, but we'll do the best we can. Man, bad start. It's fine. Everything's fine. All right, going to nuke us for one. Um, I'm trying to think. There is a world where we get to Phyrexian Obliterator and force the sacrifice. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's terrifying. Uh, the fact that this just gets bigger every turn is ridiculous. This uh, this Cauldron deck is ridiculously good. It was amazing and standard. It's phenomenal now. Uh, and you can see why. I mean, it's just got these recursive threats. So even if you were to go kill the Cauldron Familiar, they just sacrifice it. Get it back. It's not a problem. You really have to disrupt by killing the Witch's Oven, uh, which is not something that our deck does, right? We fight creatures really well. We do not fight any other, you know, artifacts, things like that. That's just not in our game plan. We actually handle Planeswalkers surprisingly well because, again, we can fight off the creatures enough that we just kind of get in there. But let's hope they don't have a removal spell for the Shakedown Heavy because that would be bad. Uh, there is a world, again, though, where we actually fight rigging. Oh, they've got Meat Hook Massacre. Can they just... Oh, they just... <laughs> Dang it. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's gonna... Yeah, that's not good. Okay, um... <laughs> I think we just go Obliterator and hope for the best. Uh, not a lot we can do here, unfortunately. They're just gonna run rings around us at the moment. Um, 
And they have so many permanents that even like the Phyrexian Obliterator fight, if we were able to get that off, it's not really that big of a deal, right? Um, and they can just sacrifice these artifacts to to add so much. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like, oh, so good. They grabbed themselves a uh, Shambling Gas. This is now a 5-5. Five, five. And they have, oh my goodness, they just have everything. That, I mean, they are like perfect draw. Perfect draw. Uh, that's insane. That was like a really, I mean, genuinely, that was a very, very solid uh, draw from the opponent. Um, there's not a lot we can do. <laughs> uh, we can hope to block, but like, that's ambitious, and we only have seven life left. I think we're out, guys. I think we are out. Uh, but man, what a fun deck this has been. I really love this deck. Uh, game one was amazing. That's like the game plan every time. So if you can ever get to that point, that's exactly what you want to do. And it just felt so fun. Uh, again, I mean, the likelihood of this deck taking down a full event is fairly unlikely. It's pretty good at the one thing that it does, uh, which is just deal tons and tons of damage. Oh my goodness. Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, there's really not too much going on. And so I think, just against a wide variety of decks, it's probably not your best bet. That being said, it's a blast to play. And, I mean, despite what we're seeing right now, I do think it is actually quite good against a handful of decks. A lot of the fast decks and things like that, it doesn't have too bad of a time handling because you've got the Shambling Gas to kill off one or two things sometimes. Uh, against Elves, it's great. Uh, I think... I think we kind of just had some bad matchups, which is okay too. Uh, that's always going to happen. But guys, unfortunately, that does end our uh, our little event here of a two and three record. Not exactly great, but still not terrible. I mean, we had a fun time with it. Let's see. Let's look at our Ravnica Allegiance pack. What a great set. Uh, <laughs> let's see what we get. Uh, cool. Awesome. Well, guys, we're going to end it, end it there. Excuse me. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I'm not sure if I'll get gameplay up this weekend or not, but if I do, I'll see you guys then. And if not, I'll see you guys next week. Have a fantastic one, guys. I love you all.